Hello and welcome to Satisfactory. My name is Volkata and today, today is moving day. <laughs> I am so excited. We uh, got our coal power up and running in the last episode and this stuff, oh, as much as reasonably possible, is going away. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait to have this field you know, all cleaned out and have buildings where we can house our machines and have them organized and not have belts crisscrossing all over the place and we can actually run around. It's gonna be pretty exciting. So today is really gonna be about cleaning up and ramping up what we already have so that we can push forward in the future. The hard drive from uh, last episode is done. So it's, we literally are just picking right up where we left off. So let's go check it out and get to business. All right, time for the big reveal. What do we get? What do we get? Um, <laughs> we definitely have the, the copper version of the iron ingots. Uh, alloy recipe that we had last time that we are not interested in. Um, alternate rotor recipe, that's interesting. And an alternate for quick wire. So we don't make quick wire yet and we won't be using it in, too excessively. I think some of the late game stuff and alternate recipes use it and it becomes valuable but uh, it's not, we're not gonna need to be producing this in such large quantities that we want to steal uh, copper over to, to uh, Caterium products. So I'm thinking that the alternate here for the copper rotor, which would replace the uh, rods. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of math here. Now it's pretty easy on the, the one on the bottom, right? 25 screws produces one rotor and the one on top, 25 screws. So that's gonna be eh, roughly 17 screws per rotor. So that's good. Also rods are kind of slow to produce. So, you know, giving us kind of a, an early use for the copper sheeting, which we primarily use early on for piping and I believe for the um, tubing when we have transport tubes, but I don't think we'll be producing anything early on using it. And so it's a, it's kind of a, a product that we have availability for. Also 11.25 per minute versus four per minute. So this is gonna be the one we take. And we'll, uh, we'll just consider how we're going to work that into our, our factory as we go. But that looks like a pretty good recipe. All right, all right. So I'm going to... I'm gonna <laughs> what I'm going to do next is I'm going to prepare to move all of our iron indoors. And we have, we have our two pure iron productions going on here. And I believe we have a couple more of them that we haven't exploited just over here. You know, I, I hadn't really scouted this area out. I, I, when I first was looking for where I wanted to start the series, I was looking for, you know, open space and nice, you know, beautiful terrain and not really resources. And it turns out that this is a, a really ample resource area. This two more pure iron and I think we had another one over somewhere else. So we're this is going to become a mega hub for iron products. And that's great. So this this kind of void here between all four of these nodes will probably become a major manufacturing or at least a major smelting center. It's where we can maybe draw them all in and do some kind of big building that can handle our smelting and 
be kind of expandable in the future once we have you know faster belts and higher grade you know mark two mark three uh, miners so the design needs to be be able to breathe a bit and uh yeah 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 so let me get to kind of mapping us out and uh and we can start moving things in and uh Let's uh, let's see what we can we can come up with here for uh, a, ba a basic starting building. Okay, so uh, you know, a little sidebar from what we were just doing. <laughs> um, in the interest of full disclosure, and and honestly, I was going to I had no intention of of pointing this out or talking about this. Uh, but this will give you some insight as to what to expect from me, both in this series and just in general from my channel, if you are uh, a newer viewer. Uh, I cut out a comment last episode. And the comment was that when I put that hole in the wall for this pipe, I recognized that that wasn't a straight line down to here. And the line that I deleted during edit was oh great this doesn't line up that means i need to tear down the entire setup and move it all back one square <laughs> and i didn't do it because like no that's insane even though i wanted to do it and um you know i i paused the recording when we were back at the hub when I was preparing to start, you know, reconfiguring our iron, which we're going to go right back to. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I came back over here and, um, I did it. <laughs> I did, I had to do it. And it's worse than it sounds because I realized that when I built this platform, we talk about the global grid, which is that if you hold down control, there's a grid, a hidden grid across the whole map that things snap to. And it is one of the new, one of the newer features that I have been most excited about. And when I built this platform before, I didn't realize that I did not snap it to the global grid. And when I started doing this, I recognized that when I couldn't bring that pipe straight down because these were not lined up with those, those down there, which are part of the global grid. So, um, yeah, I tore down the entire platform, coal production and everything and over the past couple of hours, I've rebuilt the entire thing off camera. And I had no intention of telling you guys. I figured no one would notice. You see, I even <laughs> I even cut in on the the platform so it would match with the uh, the time lapse from last episode. But you know what? Some people are crazy, and I'm one of them. So I thought, uh, you know, I thought I would just go ahead and admit it. Get it out of the air, and uh, so when you see me do crazy things in the future, you understand why. <laughs> and this has been moved as well. So here we are back at the uh, the hub, and I wanted to show you real quick, in case you are new to this game, what the slugs are for. They are power slugs, and they create these power shards. Now what power shards do is they allow us to overclock the uh, machines. Ooh, we already have the stuff on us for do that. Awesome. Now we won't use that very often, but it can be immensely useful. Hey, you'll be able to scan for sulfur now. Nice. Okay, not worried about black powder. Let's start this research. Now overclocking comes at a cost. When you you overclock something, your production rate of that machine goes up, but the power consumption goes up faster. So if you have 
if you have a smelter that is running at 200%, it will consume more power than two smelters sitting side by side, both running at 100%. So typically we won't use power slugs on manufacturing because we can always go vertical. Space really isn't that big of a deal in this game. What is a bigger deal is the, uh, the resource intake. So most of the time when we use slugs, it will be on miners or you know extractors of some sort to increase the amount of raw material that we're bringing in. And then we can just spam machines all we need. But let's go over here. I had a idea. Okay, so here is the general layout and we're not gonna do it on the first floor. The first floor is gonna be for belting and whatnot, I believe. But I'm gonna show you real quick what I had in mind. We're gonna put mergers on the outer corners. I think that's lined up. Okay. And splitters in the center. And right now, I'm not sure which direction the splitters are going to face. So safely, I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go towards the middle. Mm. We're gonna go. We're gonna go the extra. This is subject to change. Then what we are going to do is put smelters in between them, like so. and mergers on the outside. Hopefully you can see where this is going. And we're gonna, because I want to use these these cool uh, hole, you know, floor hole things. And what we'll do is we'll have a like I said, the bottom floor, these aren't going to be here. I'm going to tear these back up after I'm done showing you. I'm going to lift these up off the ground and put them on like a second floor or third floor or something like that. But there will be a conveyor hole. Something like right here. You know, we might have to move it back, which is why I say it might come from the outer ring. And... We would have conveyor lift come up. I don't know if that's actually connected or if we have to draw a line. So I don't know if that's going to be connected or not. But that would be the point is we would have the bottom floor will we'll manage all the incoming raw resources and then they'll be lifted up in columns on each side and go into the, uh, the smelters and then the smelters will merge, because there will be one on each side. Like right here. And these will pop into, you know, into holes as well, going through the floor or the ceiling. And they will end up merging with a kind of a circulating belt that will collect them all together. And then they can come out a window or something that effect. I think that's going to be really cool. And there will be an inner ring here. I want to get, I want to get the catwalks. So instead of using the solid uh, structures, I want to do a catwalk out to the halfway mark, and then leave a hole going down the middle, both for the the, the visual of being able to look down in the down the center, and for in the future when we have the the uh, the power suit that allows us to fly up and down anywhere that there's power. And that's gonna be the general idea. So I'm gonna get the, the basics built. And we have enough coupons now for 
some uh, a couple of purchases I want to make real quick like I want industrial walkways for our factories I want modern catwalks for our house so for now we're going to go with the industrial walkways and we'll make our porch out of this and then later we'll replace it with the modern ones and we really really need these conveyor walls so that's going to be all of our current tickets but I think that's about all we need for this so it's a uh, let me get to building this and I'll bring you guys back Oh boy, that was a lot of work. <laughs> now, it it needs windows. <laughs> I mean, I know it looks like a plain box right now, but uh, you know, we, we need windows. We need other stuff that we can just make things look a little bit better. But this is, if it works first try, I'm gonna be amazed. And uh, it's tricky. It's I'm. You know, these being able to do things through the floor is new to me. And uh, we used to have to work ways around it and do a lot of stuff out windows and up and around. And I, I went kind of went kind of ham with it. And uh, I did a couple of initial small tests and the concept I believe works. I'm gonna walk you guys through it as we plug it all in and uh, <laughs> hope it works. But uh, I need to, uh, I need to do some unlocks real quick before we can finish because we don't have uh, we don't have Mark II power poles, and while they're not strictly required, they are going to make a difference with that many machines. And so, I've gone and got together a bunch of quick wire, and I think it's in my inventory. Yeah, there it is. And uh, this is going to take several minutes because these are not quick researches. All right, got five minutes. And real quick, while that's doing that, I'm going to give you a quick tour of something that I had to do. Uh, the way the building is designed, it's meant to house 
four uh, miners worth of smelters and it doesn't work properly if you don't have all four miners running. This is all temporary. I had to just get some stuff out of the way. I, I, just please ignore this going through a block. Um, because I had to, I had to stop the uh, limestone coming through here. But I'm going to give you this quick tour while that's researching, and then we're going to pause, and I'm going to wire everything up, and then we'll go to the test. Now, originally, I thought I was going to have to do a lot of circular, like, ground stuff. But as I got to building this, I realized it could work even more cool. And I, I kind of tore some of this down and rebuilt it. But we're going to look on the, the first floor here. First floor, on the, uh, the middle, is the input for uh, each conveyor for, for the iron. So the raw iron at 120 per minute or later on when we have additional you know mark 2 and mark 3 and the building gets taller the the it'll be a mark 2 belt going in carrying 120 iron ore iron ore will pass through this uh, this lift the lift goes into the splitter and it goes to either side. You can see there's a little bit of ore on the line where I just tested to make sure that this actually connects. And it'll split to either side and then they will split, you know, the, they'll merge uh, as they're made and they will go into this back down. Now, they, this thing can coming up, right? The, it splits three ways, not two. because so it goes into both machines and then it goes into another up which does the same on the next floor. And with this layout, we can chain one, uh, one belt, you know, one miner all the way up. So when we go to Mark two and we get faster belts, we'll upgrade these and then they'll chain and go up. So it's always gonna be two smelters per floor dedicated to one miner. And we'll just keep adding floors as necessary to keep up with the, the output speed as fast as the belts can carry. If we get down the stairs, there's that first corner and there's the second corner. So they are separate outputs. We're going to have four 120 lines. And we ran into the small problem here that the last pure node over there has got a giant rock on it that we need explosives to uh, access. And it, I don't know if I have time to include the clip, but I found a sulfur node and I attempted to do the research and unfortunately we cannot get to it. We need steel before we can do the research to get explosives. So that meant we were down one pure node for this entire building to work properly because the math it works itself out if all four quadrants are putting out at the same time at the same speed. So as you can see this belt here, this is a temporary belt. We have six pure nodes in this area. One over here, you know, two of them over here by the space elevator. So I temporarily threw one of those, I'll put it online, and it's just gonna wrap around and it's gonna take the place of the fourth node until we can do explosives, at which time we'll, we'll swap it out. Oh boy, Mam's research already done. That means I rambled for five minutes. <laughs> that's uh, that's not good. Okay. All right. Mark two New poles. Building unlocked. Now, I'm gambling that that means we're gonna have yes, 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 yes. I never use these. Mar In fact, I don't even want to bother unlocking these because I don't even want them on my build menu. <laughs> oh, this is so nice. Oh yeah, we're gonna just we're just gonna hit number one, and we're gonna replace the Mark One pole with that. Now we can do Mark Two poles, ah <laughs> uh, baby. All right, well, I'm going to run around and I'm gonna wire all this stuff up, and then we'll come back and we'll get a live test. All right, the moment of truth has arrived. It has arrived. I have. 
I think, I think I have everything. Look, there's no testing here. It, it, any one of these could be facing the wrong direction. There could be a, uh, you know, a lift that isn't actually connected or going the wrong way. One of these machines could be set wrong. Something could be not plugged into power. <laughs> we could also blow this. <laughs> we could also blow a fuse when we power this whole thing up. I did a little back of the uh, back of the napkin uh, math, and I think we're okay. But as you can see, so this is how clean these wall mounts are. This is so wonderful. I love this. And so that's a double mount. So that the outside power is coming in through this one right here, and then these are all single mounts. I'm just wrapping it around, and it's connecting with all of them. Let's power everything up. And uh, cross her fingers because um, I don't know that this is going to work. <laughs> we'll start with the farthest away one because it's got the farthest to send its uh, material. All right, turn that one back on. Turn that one back on, and we need to power the one out back. We should have a Mark II double. Here it is. Excellent. All right, let's run upstairs. We should start seeing these lights go. Oh, light's green. Good. Good, good, good. Green lights. Green lights, we like seeing green lights. Look, all right. So it's just, so we know these are connecting because we can see some going up. So all those connections are good. Lights are all going green. <laughs> this might work. <laughs> this might actually work. These guys are, are a little farther behind. This guy right here is the one that's all the way across the map. So he's gonna be the last one to come on. All right, look, that's the, the one in the back. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And uh, this might take. And there, there's. It's entirely possible that I have something in a Mark One belt somewhere that needs to be a Mark Two. Boy, it's it's. Uh, there's there's so much that can go wrong. Like these should be Mark One. These should be Mark Two. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I I would like to see, or to start arriving. You know what? What's uh? We'll we'll check on those last. So those two. <laughs> We already got it going out. Nice, nice. Oh yeah, we need to see it coming down, coming down on the corner, coming down the corner. That means that means the junction between the uh, the lift is is correct. Down, awesome. Oh, there we go. We got ore going up. All right, yes. Oh, it works. It all works. Okay. Oh, we're back at home. Back at home. I, I promise we'll have windows for you soon, baby. Um, I'm not really sure how we unlock them, but we we will have windows, but we're going to make it a higher priority. Uh, there's the building. I, I think I, I'm really happy with where we put the house because, you know, we can see the space elevator, our new buildings there. This is a good view. We get a little lake there. Yeah, I, I feel like we chose well. Uh, you know, Brian Bush is out front. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I said something about cleaning all this stuff up, uh, you know, at the beginning of the episode and probably at the end of the last episode. Obviously, we didn't really get any of it cleaned up, right? We took, we literally only took three smelters out of the field and uh, replaced them with 16 smelters in a gigantic building. <laughs> but uh, we got, I mean, we got a ton done. You know, we, we say that each time, but it's really true. We, we, uh, we went through the roof, you know, we were producing like 90 ingots per minute um, when we started this, uh, this episode. And now we're producing 480 ingots per minute. So we, you know, we're in place to start putting down more constructors and more assemblers. And we want to get other things going like the, uh, the, the, the modular frame things and whatnot. And this is what we had to do to start. So next will be to kind of decide how we want to do buildings for producing some dedicated things like iron plate and uh, iron uh, rods. 
All right. Well, thank you very much for coming out, and thank you very much for hanging out with me. And uh, I, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, this is great. I love the way this is coming out. And if you like it, leave a like. Feel free to leave a comment if you uh, you know have anything to say about the uh, the series. You know, any questions, or if you just want to say hi. You know, I love to hear from you guys, and uh, you know, I read every comment that comes in. So uh, definitely leave, leave a comment if uh, if you're so inclined. But um, you know, if you're new or haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. And uh, beyond that, thank you very much for coming out again. And thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode.